Yeah, uh, good evening class. Uh, today our topic is on sex. The commanded, <laughs> the permitted, and the forbidden. Uh, I've just summarized it. It's a very, very long topic, but very interesting. So, we need to understand why it's commanded, why is permitted to who and why is it then forbidden you understand that there is a a verse in the parasha there's a verse in the, in the bible in the torah that says thy shall not commit adultery it's one of the ten commandments found in the book of exodus around chapter 20 verse 14. so this topic is very very interesting i like it and uh, there are a lot of mysteries around it and uh, it's going to be a revelation so when i was reading about it i thought i should i should share but before that um i need to to tell you a parable uh, about a certain researcher and, and his professor so <clears throat> The professor gave his a student, he was marking the, the student's thesis, in fact. So the rabbi was called the Rebbe Yav Yosef Yitzhak. So, so someone went to the rabbi, this rabbi, and said to, to Rabbi Yitzhak, Skinason, and said, Rabbi, why in this day and age you still think that if you write a book people will read or if you upload something people will read or if you write about the bible people will read what makes you think they will people are busy with something with so many things so what makes you think they will read then the rabbi uh, gave a parable <laughs> that's the parable that's the parable that i like most the, 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 the rabbi said to the to the to the person who had asked him why he's doing he's writing books why he's publishing books why he's writing articles why he's uploading uh, articles on google scholar so so the rabbi to say to to the person who had asked the person so he gave an, a, a parable because the rabbi was a professional parabolist person who had so many parables so the rabbi said to the person who asked the question, a young aspiring inventor, uh, you can say a researcher, labored for so many years, preparing for a thesis for so many years, preparing for a project. And finally, you must understand, after 10 years, he wrote uh, to his mentor, the supervisor, a great engineer under whose tutelage he had studied. So saying that he had finished and he was inviting the, the, the professor to come and critique the research. Uh, because the professor was uh, some kind of a redactor. Uh, so the great engineer replied that he was scheduled to be in town. Uh, so he was going to visit the young man and uh, that he would be more happy to, to give some comments. So... As the appointed day neared, or the, as the day was coming near, nearer and nearer, the young man grew extremely agitated. He was anxious. So he felt that this was to be the most important test ever, maybe after nine to ten years doing that project. So he saw this invasion as an embodiment of his most creative, you know, most creative ideas he had done. So he was very much afraid that he may fail the examination. The test when the professor comes so one day he woke up in the morning he knew that he could not trust himself no he could not trust himself about what, what he was doing so he knew the verdict of the the, the mentor the, the the professor so out of panic he left his blueprint on the table where he used to write the thesis or the study the, the table he used to do his studies so he left together with an, so he wrote a note uh, which, which he gave to, to his wife to say, when, they, when the professor comes, please 
my wife, give this to the, to the professor. So after telling his wife, he went into the street. Said, I like it so much. So it was late in the evening when he re-ended his study. He came, so, so he came back after, say, uh, sometime, let's, let's say in the evening. So he came back. So he went straight into his study. No sooner did he glance at the table and he uttered a cry and he collapsed in his chair. The, the, the woman was shocked. The wife was shocked. His wife, rushing to her husband's side, found him white as shit and with a look of utter despair, prostrate on the ground. On the table lay the blueprint of his invention. No, the, the blueprint is the some kind of uh, the plan for the project. He had finished, he had polished, and he was just expecting the, the, the professor to come as a redactor and give some comments. So but but this guy when he came to the study room he fell. So the woman was he was he was he was was worried. Why did you fall? Why are you lying prostrate on the ground? So on the table lay the, this blueprint, the, the invention. So with some tests, you know, test lines of black ink crisscrossing the, the table and the, the blueprint, some some ink that had fell on the on the on the blueprint. So it was crisscrossing the whole the whole plan. So the wife said, "It does it, it does look like it's in bad shape." Said his wife. Then the husband said, but, but what happened to this plan of mine? And the wife said, but you can, you can redraw it from your memory. You are a guru in this. <laughs> After all these 10 years that you've been doing it, so you can do it from your, from your memory. You can do it from your memory. Every line on that diagram is ingrained in your mind. So why did you fall? I can draw it in my sleep, said the husband. But that is hardly the problem. So what is the problem, said the wife. And uh, the wife was wondering, what is the problem? So the researcher said, the problem is that the greatest engineer in the land has crossed out the last 10 years of my, of my, of my, of my work. In his mind, was when he went out to the streets, he thought, because he went out to the streets in the morning from 8. This was around around 8 p.m. So he thought between these times, the whole day, maybe the professor came. And the professor had crisscrossed his work. So he, he was saying, the problem is not that I cannot draw it. The problem is that this assignment was already marked. And I felt, because ink is crisscrossing my work. There's an X on my work. So the professor said, you, you failed. The teacher said, your, the, the wife said, your teacher? You mean the professor? He said, yes. <sighs> then the wife said, I'm sorry, my husband. I'm really sorry for that. He sent the word in the morning that he could not, he could not come today. So what happened here on the table is that the cat climbed on your table and knocked over a bottle of ink on it. It's the cat. So the professor is the cat that was climbing over your table and knocked the bottle over and the bottle spilled over a cross on your work. It's not, it's not the professor. It's not the professor. The wife <laughs> telling the husband. So what is the moral of this story? What's the moral of this story? The moral of the story is that don't worry about cats that jump across your work. Don't worry about cats that crosses over whatever you're doing, that put X's on whatever you're doing. Was the engineer, Moshiach, the engineer, Jesus, the engineer, the creator of the universe, the engineer, our God, the examiner is not yet here. It's still somewhere. It's going to come. But don't fall. Stand up and continue doing good.
So that's the story. I just wanted to introduce this story to, to, to you. Yeah. Because some people are good at that. Yeah, don't do that. Why are you doing it? You know, it's not good. No. You can't be perfect. We are not, we are not perfect. We, we didn't come here to be perfect because we were brought here by God to do what is in Hebrew called tikkun olam. To try to heal the world. So wherever you are, wherever you are, you are there to heal. We were brought here by God, by the primordial mind who sent you here to heal the world. So that's the idea behind, behind that. So whether you fail, whether you pass, but you must continue to do good. Uh, so like I've introduced earlier on, that our topic today is about sex, the commanded, the permitted, and the forbidden. Who shall not commit adultery? There are so many stories around uh, the international divide. So many stories, so many books. They are, you know, these subjects they retain in the tons and pages of history. You now, from antiquity, people have been studying it. In the, from from the, from Gan Eden up to Garden Eden up to now, it's a story. You know, you know the story that happened in Gan Eden with Lilith, the first wife of. Adam uh, That's why Joseph said to Zuleika. Zuleika was uh, Zuleika was the wife of Potiphar. Potiphar, you know the story in the Bible, it's in Genesis thirteen and verse nine. That's why Joseph asked Joseph the righteous said to Zuleika, the wife of uh, Potiphar, "How can I do this wicked thing and sin before God?" So the Torah went on to say the Torah is the Hebrew Bible that we call the Bible in in, in English. And in, in Hebrew is the Torah of truth, the Torah of Emmet. Torah is the plural. So the Torah of truth says, How can a man be very good in taking care of his money, taking care of his cattle, taking care of his materiality when he's not good? about taking care of his sexual impulse. How can a man be very good at that when he cannot be good in taking care of his sexual impulse? So, by definition, sex is a function of the body, a drive which men shares with animals, like eating, drinking, uh, sleeping. So it's the, it's, we share that with animals. If we do sex, we, we have sex. But the only difference between humanity and animals, human beings and animals, is that animals cannot control their sexual impulse. But humanity, we can control. We have been given power by God too. We can control that. And so many people may be shocked and we are saying, what is he trying to say? And because, you know, you know like I, I, we. I discussed in that other video about fundamentalism and gullibility. When people when, when people are gullible, when people believe in small things, they have a problem. If I if I tell someone that you know, uh, if I say to people, there's a lizard with with three heads and with three tails. People say, you know, a Russia, an ignorant person, an unlearned person will say, ah. There's no reason like that, because he or she didn't see it. But to a zoologist, there's a that lizard called a Tautaras lizard. So to people who doesn't know, they just, because they just say what they want, you know. They speak Lashonara, if you speak. So uh, that's it. So people must understand that there's the secrecy. To, to this, even in the holy, in the in, around the the ark of the covenant, the the cherubs, you, if you heard about the cherubs, the cherub, cherub in the Bible, the the, the ark of the covenant had two uh, pictures of a, a cherub, a, a, like a cherub, like two children, a male and a female. They were put on the cherub, facing each other. So. Uh, entwined with each other, and when they lacked merit, they would turn their face away from one another. This is found in the Zohar, volume 2, page 78. Uh, the, the, the Zohar, sorry, Zohar, volume 2, uh, verse 78a. You can see it from Baba Basra, a book of this called Baba Basra. So, uh, it was in the, in the, that's, it was, 
it's, it's about sex and how God wants people to, to, to follow his way. It, again, in the book called the Tzavazari uh, this it tells about Lilith. Lilith was the first wife of Adam before Eve. It's written in the Midrash. There so if, even if people Google, there, there's a verse in the Bible that Isaiah 34 verse 40 speaks about Lilith. So Lilith is a sexual demon that controls the hearts and minds of men by dominance and again control. So when Lilith refuses, when Lilith refuses to, to lie with underneath Adam Arishoni during sex, she pronounces the forbidden name of God and flies away. She flew away. A new form is a winged demon who kills mothers and children during birth process. All this is written. So indeed, the biblical word for uh, the biblical word for for prostitute is kedesha, kedesha, k a d e s h a, kedesha, a word very closely related to kedusha, in Hebrew, meaning holiness. Why are these words closely in terms of how they are built? Because Ekedesha imitated the holiness by using sexuality as a weapon to destroy men. So it's the reverse of Kedusha, holiness. You see? So we are at war with Lilith. And what, what we must understand is that when life force energy is deleted through sex, through numerous promiscuous sexual encounters once focus of energy is deleted externally and wasted upon another object or oneself so when this occurs life force energy within us is depleted leaving the person or the practitioner in brackets subject to sexual perversion and addiction seeking more and more sexual intensity to replace his or her own loss for sexual energy you see so such a such a such a person becomes the one with the satan um, the one with lily the agent of evil so because lily this lily the the uh, first wife of Adam Arishoni in Gan Eden, in the Garden of Eden, is written. Sucks, she sucks the force out of people through sexual misdeeds. In this way, she captures their souls and turns them into spiritual vampires like yourself. Now, the predominance of sexual perversity in our society is no coincidence. It is all part of a diabolical, satanic plan to weaken mankind and to remove us from the divine order, to remove us away from God. And we become, we become uh, psychological slaves. And the satanic and leader's plan from the beginning was to sway away people from, from the creator of the universe. So, I don't know how best God can help us. And uh, I don't know how best He can help us. Well, this subject I know is very controversial. No? Because the Satan has hijacked the world. But when we don't conserve our, our semen or supernal waters, we we are doomed to hell i don't know yeah we're doomed to hell because according to the torah the semen conserves um uh, phosphorus in it which is the chemical energy that makes us fire so we can utilize this chemical for the brain via knowledge and creativity so if you waste this fire, the phosphorus in the semen, you lose some of your full potentialities to do more with your brain. 
because it will be wasted on your animal self that sits dominate over your higher self that came from God. Remember, a human being has two constituencies, the soul and the body. And the soul must dominate than the body. The soul is that part of God, part of the spirit that came from from Olama Ba, from heaven. And the soul came on earth to pick this body. So the body, if if you don't control it, if you don't manage the body, then there's a problem. Then there's a serious problem. So people can choose either to conserve the semen, to conserve that energy, which we should then release force for us, for our higher selves, in order to be maybe a wise philosopher or an artist such as Pythagoras theory, the legs of Herodotus, the legs of so many Plato, Aristotle, Newton. You, we can, you, you, those heights can be reached if someone conserves that energy. So, so we can either use our, our precious inner fire to visit the libraries, to go to, 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 to school, to the university to study and become good people. So, but because humanity, we have our own, own way of seeing things. You no, know, there's an article that uh, uh, I think to come, in the, in those these are just series. Uh, about uh, people but the bible says god created man in his image meaning god created man in his own image but if you look at it today it is people who have created their own god people who have created their own god because they want god to do what they want it's not like that it, it doesn't look like that they want because in the bible says i shall not commit adultery god is not pleading ah, no Sure, can you not? No, it's not like that. It's the law of God. It's the law of God. Like I've alluded to in the previous video. If you... And the, the, the law of gravity says, if you climb a tree, well, when there is a, 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 it's, it's a darker or whatever you fall. So, so sexual perversion leads to psychological imbalances of the greatest kinds and invokes violence within its practitioners. Sigmund Freud, a Jewish philosopher, the, the famous psychiatrist, was very keen to observe the relationship between sex and violence. As our society becomes oversexed, so it becomes overly violent. Everywhere in South Africa, people are killing them. Someone took my wife and people are killing each other before, because, of, because, because the, 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 this energy is misappropriated. So the, so the higher one ascends along the spiritual path, the more one is tested with, with so you see, like, so that's why we have so many prophets, so many pastors are in, are involved in these things. Because the, when, higher, when, when someone uh, 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 ascends, the ascension of his higher, when someone ascends higher in the spiritual realm, the more you ascend, the more you are tested. Uh, one, one, one uh, is another presentation for Rabbi, I talk about Rabbi Akiva is my, my favorite in these issues. So the more you 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 ascend the spiritual ladder, the more you are exposed to these temptations by the Satan. So there are numerous methods how to, to resist these temptations. These methods include the in, the intense periods of meditation. Uh, uh, and fasting. The weaker the physical body through fasting, the stronger the spiritual soul. Those who have suppressed the, 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 the physical body, the hamo. The hamo is the body. So the stronger the spiritual discipline, the weaker the sexual temptation. Yeah, so that was my topic. Uh, uh, and, and, and God must help us to to be in a position to abide by by his laws thank you so much uh, guys this is uh, what i have today so share with others like i alluded to last time i'm not doing this for 
and I say for anyone but I'm doing this just to to save my information if you know what YouTube it will to be there for, for for eternity so this is what I'm doing so next time see you next time thank you so much may God bless you the Kadosh Baruch Hu, no, the Bible says uh, God does not be, God does not pay attention to physical phenomena he can suspend the laws of nature and bring blessings to humanity when mankind needs it. Only when we abide by his laws, because his commandments are his enablements. Amen, amen, and amen.